ya kushangazwa Pastor Joy it's Pastor Joy mchungaji Joy cuz you know Pastor Mrs Mudavadi is too long <laughs> mchungaji B Mudavadi ni ndefu zaidi she really desired alitamani the spirit of excellence roho ya ubora and she received it na kaipokea and the lord told me as she was speaking mungu alinenea alipokuwa na that she also received kwamba alipokea pia the spirit of exaltation roho ya kuinuliwa and the spirit of encouragement na roho ya kutia moyo did you notice how she encouraged us jeu lipata jinsi alikuwa anatutia moyo so she is the type yeye ni mtu she just needs to say two words anahitaji tu kusema maneno mawili and people are encouraged na watu wanahimizika that's a spirit of exaltation hiyo ni roho ya kuinuliwa and encouragement give na god the glory hallelujah hallelujah i'd like to know is there anybody here je kuna mtu hapa who does not belong to the serve internationals that serve ambayo si wa huduma wa serve yes the serve ministries ambayo si wa huduma wa serve so everybody yes okay i can see a few hands up Na you are invited mlialikwa hallelujah hallelujah is somebody doing a good job kuna mtu anafanya kazi nzuri praise the lord bwana yesu asifiwe so tomorrow kwa hivyo kesho we expecting a house full tunatarajia nyumba ijaye isn't it si ni hivyo because it's the last day kwa sababu ni siku ya mwisho But the Lord lakini Mungu has prepared something every day ameandaa kitu kila siku for you kwa ajili yako because you have prayed kwa sababu ulikuwa umeomba hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord bwana yesu asifiwe so i'm going to speak about naenda kunena kuhusu acts that move god matendo ambayo msongeza Mungu it's interesting ni ajabu This uh, has already this topic has been touched. Kipengele kimeguzwa. And even just now by Dr. Were. Sasa hivi na daktari Were. So I felt what you felt the other day. Kwa hivyo nilihisi jinsi ulihisi ile siku nyingine. And I was wondering where somebody stop her. Nilikuwa nasema mtu amkomeshe. She saying everything I'm going to say. Anasema kila kitu nataka kusema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But as prophet said the other day, Nabii alisema siku nyingine. This happened to her. Na hiyo pia ilimfanyikia. That it means God if we find God repeating something because he repeats that. Mungu anarudia kitu. It's because he wants to emphasize. Kwa sababu anataka kusisitiza. And he wants that thing dealt na anataka hicho kitu kishughulikiwe. So we are just going to obey him. Tunaenda kumtii yeye. Let's turn to numbers. Tuende kwa hesabu. 25 numbers 25 hesabu 25 haleluya haleluya praise the lord bwana yesu asifiwe i was fascinated nilishangazwa by the way you raised your voices in prayer jinsi mliinua sauti zenu katika maombi when the rain was threatening wakati mvua ile kuinatisha to shut us down ilikuwa ma inatushitisha tusiendelee you were so determined tulikuwa tumejitoa kabisa that you must receive today lazima tupokee siku ya leo what is this thing ni nini hiki ambacho that the lord has prepared for you today ambacho mungu amekuandalia siku ya leo that was being challenged ambacho kilikuwa kina We are going to find out. Tunaenda kuipata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop the move of God. Hakuna kitu inaweza komesha mtembeo wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Numbers 25. Sabu 25. And we are going it's a, it's a bit long but uh, there's something we want to get from there. Ndefu na kuna kitu tunataka tupate. Na Israel remained in Acacia Grove basi Israeli kakaa shitimu and the people began to commit halotry with the women of Moab kisha watu wakaanza kuzini pamoja na wanawake wa Moab they invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods kwa kuwa waliwaalika hao watu waende sadakani and the people ate and bowed down to their gods na sadaka walizozichinjia miungu yao so Israel was joined to Baal of Peor and and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel ikawa Israeli kujiungamanisha na ba Baal peroli hasira za Bwana zikawaka juu ya Israeli. Then the Lord said to Moses, Kisha Bwana akamwambia Musa, Take all the leaders of the people, Watwae wakuu wote wa watu hao, and hang the offenders before the Lord. Ukamtungukie Bwana watu hao mbele ya mbele ya jua. 
out in the sun that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, Every one of you kill his men who are joined to Baal of Peor. And indeed one of the children of Israel came and presented his brethren to a Midianite woman. Akaja na kuwaletea nduguze mwanamake mwanamke mwanamke midiani mbele ya sight, macho ya Musa. Yes, in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Mbele ya macho wote wa wana wa Israeli. Now when Finhas some names uh, Finhas is it? Finhas the son of Eliza the son of Aaron the priest saw it he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand and, when, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman threw her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, this is where there is emphasis. Phinehas, the son of Eliza, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel. Because he was zealous with my zeal among them. So that I did not consume the children of Israel in my zeal. Therefore say. Behold I give to him my covenant of peace. And it shall be to him and his descendants after him. A covenant of an everlasting peace priesthood because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is an act of zeal. God was so impressed with this young man that he was so, this young man was so offended sana huyu kijana. on behalf of God Kwa niyaba ya mungu. that he went and he killed this, these two people kawawa watu hawa wawili. Who, who are in the act of, of uh, walikuwa, adultery. Ama walikuwa katika tendo la kuzini. And you know he did it for the sake of God. He had God's anger in him. That zeal. That act. Moved God. And caused him. To make him a priest. Even down to his descendants. So he won a place. He won a place. For him and his children, in a, in a special position, before the Lord, simply because he had great zeal. So the first step is speaking, but then the next step, the finishing, is acting. So when you have zeal for God, Kama una ile ari kwa mungu, you provoke him to act. Akatende. Let's look at John 2, Yohana mbili, from uh, verse 13. Yohana mtakatifu mbili kuminatatu. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Na pasaka yo Yahudi likuwa karibu na yesu kwa and 
And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves. Akaona pale hekaluni watu waliokuwa wakiuza ng'ombe na kondoo na njiwa. And the money changers doing business. Na wenye kuvunja fedha umeketi. When he had when he had made a whip of cords. Akafanya kikoto cha kamba. He drove them all out of the temple. Akawatoa wote katika hekalu. Let's turn to 16. Tuende 16. And he said to those who sold doves. Akawaambia wale waliokuwa wakiuza njiwa. Take these things away. Yaondoeni haya. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Msifanye nyumba ya baba yangu kuwa nyumba ya biashara. Then his disciples remembered that it was written. Wanafunzi wake wakakumbuka ya kuwa ilikuwa imeandikwa. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. Wivu wa nyumba yako utanila. So that is Jesus Huyo ni Yesu having great zeal anawivu mkuu for the house of his father kwa nyumba ya baba yake to the point kwa kufikia he kiwango he whipped people aliwacharaza watu and threw them out of the temple na kuwafukuza kutoka hekaluni how jealously ilikuwaje yenye wivu how jealously are you wewe una wivu kiwango gani guarding unalindaje and protecting na kulinda the things of god vitu vya mungu We need to see your zeal. Tutahitaji kuona wivu yako in the things that pertain him, appertain him. Kwa vitu ambavyo ni vya Mungu. That concern him. Ambavyo Mungu anashughulika navyo. That please him. Ambavyo vyampendeza yeye. You have a very unique opportunity. Una nafasi ambayo ni speciali to show your zeal. Kuonyesha wivu wako in this building out here. Katika jengo hili hapa nje. Because this building Kwa sababu jengo hili belongs to the Lord. Ni la Mungu. It is the house of the Lord. Ni nyumba ya Mungu. Where is your zeal? Je, kuna wivu wako wapi? Towards that building kuelekeza kwenye jengo hilo the lord hilo. needs to see the zeal mungu ataka aone hiyo ari yako haleluya haleluya that is not to self that is you speak to yourself about that nena kwako mwenyewe kuhusu hayo the second act of god atendo nyingine la mungu uh, sorry the second act of human beings atendo <laughs> ambalo mwanadamu hufanya that move god ambalo humsongeza mungu I want to look at the alabaster breaker. Yule ambaye anavunja Ehe. chupa ya mafuta. Matthew 26. Mathayo 26 from verse 6. Kuanzia 6. This one is mainly it's very unique especially to women. Hii ni ajabu sana hasa kwa wanawake. Women are called alabaster breakers. Wanawake wanaitwa wakuvunja chupa ya mafuta. And I won't go into detail. I we won't read, I'll just explain. Hatutasoma nitaweza kueleza tu. That kwamba huyu mwanamke Thank you. Asante. Because of her love, kwa sababu ya upendo wake and the honor that she had for Jesus. Na heshima alikuwa nayo kwa Yesu. She went, alienda and broke na kavunja a perfume Aka, jar. Akavunja chupa ya mafuta that was very expensive. Ambayo ilikuwa ni bei gali. Very very expensive. Ilikuwa ni bei gali. Perhaps they say uh, maybe the worth of a, of a year's salary. Wanasema kwamba ingekuwa ni mshahara wa mwaka mmoja. And she broke it. Na kaivunja over the head of her Messiah. Juu akaiweka juu ya kichwa cha Messiah. This act tendo hili was so profound. Ilikuwa ya ajabu that Jesus kwamba Yesu was provoked to say alichochelewa kusema that this woman kwamba huyu mwanamke shall be spoken about atanenwa kuhusu for all the years kwa miaka yote and here we are today na tuko hapa leo still speaking about her bado tunanena kuhusu mwanamke huyu so this was an act hili lilikuwa ni tendo that provoked God ambalo lilimchochea Mungu cuz she prepared him kwamba aliandaa yeye for her ba- for his burial kwa kuzikwa kwake so it was a prophetic act ilikuwa ni tendo la unabii so these are things that provoked him hivi ni vitu ambavyo vilimchochea and caused him to speak na vikafanya kanena into her life katika maisha yake 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zeal. Kuwa na wivu. We look at the apostles. Kunaangalia tunaangalia mitume. Before Jesus died, kabla Yesu afe. Uh, they were brave but walikuwa wajasiri lakini they had not been empowered hawakukuwa wametiwa nguvu after the holy spirit came upon them baada ya roho mtakatifu kuja juu yao the power that came upon them nguvu ambazo zilikuja juu yao gave them so much zeal iliwapa ari ya mawivu zaidi that they no longer feared men hawakuogopa wanadamu and they went out there wakaenda kule nje and spread the gospel wakaeneza injili they did not fear hawakuogopa death kifo that they act almost all of them died actually 11 of them died walikufa in the hands of men katika mikono ya wanadamu they were murdered walikuwa wanauawa and they were murdered na walikuwa wanarushwa mawe so they did not fear they had so much zeal hawakuogopa walikuwa na ari zaidi to spread the word of god ili kwamba wakaweze kueneza injili ya mungu that they didn't think about themselves hawakujifikiria wao wenyewe they thought about god walimfikiri mungu God is looking for people like that. Mungu anatazama watu kama hao. Who have great zeal. Ambao wana wivu kuu. They don't care about themselves. Hawajali kujihusu wenyewe. Their concern is about God. Wanashughulika na Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. You can do an act. Waweza fanya tendo that can cause God. Ambalo laweza kumfanya Mungu. To raise you from the dead. Akaweza kukutoa kwa wafu. Dorcas. Dorcas. And or we call her Tabitha also. Tabitha. Did great works. Alifanya kazi kuu for the disciples. Kwa wanafunzi. Such that Ahadi. when she died. Alipokufa. They told the Lord. Wakamwambia Mungu. No, we need Dorcas back. Tuhitaji Dorcas arudi. Because she does good things for us. Kwa sababu anafanya kazi nzuri kwetu. She takes care of us. Anatushughulikia. Can people say that about you? Je, watu wanasema hivyo, wanaweza sema hivyo kukuhusu? That act kitendo hilo provoked God. Nilimchochea Mungu. Until hadi he spoke to Dorcas there in heaven. Akamwambia kwa Dorcas kule mbinguni. And he said by the way you have to go back. Akamwambia we rudi. I know this is a wonderful place. Najua hapa ni mahali pazuri. But you have to go back. Lakini nafaa urudi. Acts that provoke God. Matendo ambayo yanamchochea Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Giving has been touched on. Kutoa kumezungumziwa sana. And I shall come back to it. Nitairudia tena. Let me first look at something else. Wacha nitazame kitu kingine tena. You can pray. Waweza omba until god hadi mungu turns things around anabadilisha vitu hana hana prayed aliomba until hadi the lord through eli or mungu eli, kupitia eli said go and get that thing that you desire akasema nenda ukapate kile kitu watamania she was asking for just one child alikuwa anauliza tu mtoto mmoja but the lord gave her many lakini mungu akampa wengi you can pray waweza omba and provoke god na umchochee mungu to give you to multiply akaweze kukuzidisha what you're asking for kile ambacho unauliza That prayer hilo ombi can provoke God. Naweza kumchochea Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She also made a vow. Akafanya nathiri pia. And she said if you give me a child. Akasema ukinipa mtoto. I shall give him back to you. Nitakupa wewe. The power of a vow. Ah, nguvu za nathiri opens you up. Inakufungua to the ladder kwa kia kwa ngazi that goes to heaven ambaye inaenda mbinguni where you find pale unapata angels ma, ascending ma, and descending malaika wanapanda na kushuka a vow anathiri provokes god huchochea mungu hallelujah hallelujah let's look at genesis 28 tuanzie tuangalie mwanzo 28 and 9 genesis 28 and verse 10 mwanzo 28 10 Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Yakobo akatoka Beersheba kwenda Harani. 
So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he laid down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamt and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And in you and your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. Let's go on. Let's skip that one. Let's go on. So he called the, the name of that place Bethel. Let's go on. Then Jacob made a vow saying, 20. If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace then the Lord shall be my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you make a vow, you provoke God. That vow provoked the Lord. And from then on, he blessed Jacob. Vows are very powerful. As much as they are good because they provoke God, be careful with a vow. Because you must keep it. If you know that you are not going to be faithful to your vow, the Bible says, don't make that vow. I think we know about, it was it Japheth? Japheth. And he made a vow. And he said, if you give me victory, I shall give you the first thing that will come running out to me. And the Lord gave him victory. And then what happened? When he went home, the first thing that ran out to him was what? His daughter. That's where we are warned. Because he had to give his daughter up. So be careful with a vow. Think it through first. Make a vow that you can keep. Pray over it first. Then you make the vow. But our God is a God of vows and covenants. He's a covenant making God and keeping God. So I'm not saying don't make a vow because it will provoke him. But think it through and, and uh, be faithful to it. Because a vow is like a promise. 
And a promise is provoked by a promise. You promise God something. He will give you a promise in return. For example, he would like to you to promise that if he gives you wealth, you shall return it back to him through a kingdom, the furtherance of the kingdom. That promise will provoke a promise from the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is an act that provokes God. Another uh, act that provokes God that has been mentioned here before is praise. Let's look at Exodus 15 verse 11. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises? Doing wonders. When you praise the Lord, he does wonders. The, pl the place of praise Mahali is a place of supernatural encounters. Ni mahali pa kiungu. For God performs wonders. Kwa mungu majabu. When you bless him, Unapo he gives you victory. Anakupa ushindi. Uh, the Israelites, Wana wa Israeli, they would go to war wangeenda vitani, and God would advise them na mungu wange wa shauri. To, to place uh, singers and musicians before the army and they should go praising God and they would receive victory. In fact, sometimes they wouldn't even fight. He would spare every man. Not even one dies because the enemy fights each other. Simply because they praised him. Those are acts that provoke God. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Why does it say that? When you enter before the throne of God with praise, you touch his heart because he abides in the praises of his people. You open up his heart and he releases blessings so you provoke him by your praise. It invites his presence and our spirit is renewed. God's power is made manifest. Praise Sifa leaves no room for negativity. As we are told earlier, when you give thanks, you just you get so happy about the things that God is doing that you do not dwell on the things that have not happened yet. And so it it repels depression. And you find yourself dwelling on good things on the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This provokes God. Praise Sifa. breaks bondages. When Paul and Sila were behind bars they praised the Lord. And the chains broke. And the gates opened. And you know there were so 
involved in praising God. Sana mungu. They were not praising God so that the chains would break or the doors would open. Mungu kwamba they were just praising God because they love him. Mungu kwa Such that when the doors opened, they didn't step out. Inje. They continued praising God. Mungu. That is what provokes God. Nicho, nicho mungu. You're so involved in praising him. Sana na yeye. That even when he has answered your prayers, Hata kama you yako. don't stop praising him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu Let's look at another act tendo that provokes God. Mungu. That is honoring Hiyo ni kuheshimu the, the man or woman of God mtumishi wa Mungu mwanamke ama mwanamme who serves at the altar ambaye anatumika katika madhibao in other words i'm saying your spiritual authority wakati mwingine nasema mamlaka yako ya kiroho your pastor wachungaji wako your spiritual father and mother wazazi wenu wa kiroho na akina mama when you honor them unapowaheshimu you provoke God. This is because they intercede for you. Let me explain this intercession that a servant of God makes. Uh, think about trouble or fire and then think about the man and or woman of god nafikiria kuhusu mtumishi wa mungu mwanamke mwanamme and then you na wewe so you're standing here we the servant of god stands here mtumishi wa mungu anasema mahapa protects you from the fire na kulinda kutokana na moto ambayo uko nyuma yako the trouble that is behind shida ambayo uko nyuma yako i remember one time nakumbuka wakati mmoja our our senior pastor mchungaji wetu mkuu prophet steven uh, Nabi Stephen did a very um, bold alifanya tendo la ujasiri intercession alifanya ujasiri uombezi wa ujasiri we had a congregant tulikuwa na kusanyiko whose family kulikuwa na mmoja katika kusanyiko ambaye familia yake had visited the dark altars ambaye ilikuwa imetembelea madhibao ya kiovu and had opened doors na alikuwa amefungua milango to very powerful genies. Kwa vitu kwa majini ambayo ni ya nguvu zaidi. And these genies kept demanding blood. Na haya majini yalikuwa yanadai damu. This lady huyu binti had lost already four members of her family. Watu wanne wa familia yake. By the time she joined our church. Kwa wakati alikuwa anakuja kanisani. And then na hivyo her brother fell sick. Uh, and it became obvious he was going to be the next victim our pastor the man of god made a cry to god and said let those genies Wacha hayo majini come to me yanijie mimi instead of to her ah kwa niaba yake let them come and meet me waje wakuje kukutana na mimi let them face me wakubane na mimi i put her behind me na muweka nyuma yangu let them face me wacha wakumbane na mimi as a very dangerous intercession huo ni uombezi hatari sana because these genies were not joking kwa sababu haya majini hawako wanacheza but i tell you lakini nakwambia the amazing thing Jambo la kushangaza. That was the end. Hiyo ilikuwa ndio mwisho. Of any deaths in that family. Ya kifo katika familia hiyo. It came to an end. Ilifika mwisho. And that person who had gone to visit the dark altars. Na huyo mtu ambaye alikuwa ameenda kwa madhibao ya kishetani. Is the one who died. Ni yeye alikufa. That is intercessory. Hayo ni maombezi. It is not a joke. Si mchezo. You wouldn't want to be in his shoes, would you? Hautaka kuwa katika kiatu chake, ungetaka? Intercessory. Uombezi. Servants of God. Watumishi wa Mungu spend nights 
wao hudumu katika usiku zao you had the prophetess speaking about that ulisikia nabii akisema hivyo they lose sleep wanapoteza usingizi praying about you wakikuombea wewe bringing you before the lord wakikuleta mbele za mungu pleading before the lord wakimulilia mungu asking for mercy before the lord rehema kutoka kwa mungu for your sake kwa sababu yako wewe they give up food wanakosa kula chakula they give up sleep wanakosa kulala they they set themselves in a place of danger wanajiweka katika mahali hatari sana they place themselves in a very dangerous position wanajiweka katika sehemu hatari for your sake kwa sababu yako have you ever thought about that leo mwai fikiria kuhusu hayo when you honor them unapowaheshimu you provoke god wamchochea mungu you know when god anointed wakati mungu alimpaka your pastor your bishop alipompaka mafuta askofu wako na mchungaji he didn't make a mistake hakufanya kosa he didn't guess yeah, let me see can it work or not work yeye hakubahatisha kwamba itafanya kazi ama haitafanya he had decided alikuwa ameamua that this person shall serve him kwamba huyo mtu atanitumikia before they were even born hata kabla wazaliwe it was predestined ilikuwa imewekwa and he placed that servant of god na kaweka huyo mtumishi wa mungu in his stead katika to represent him hapo mahali ili kwamba amwasilisha yeye here on earth hapa duniani So that's why he says na ndipo sana touch not usinyoshe kidole my anointed one mpaka mafuta wa mungu you are not there haukukuepo when he made a decision in heaven alipofanya uamuzi mbinguni to anoint this servant of god kumpaka mafuta huyu mtumishi wa mungu that oil hayo mafuta is a fire ni moto anointing is a fire mafuta ni moto and it has two sides na ina sehemu mbili anointing is a fire that um that deals with all burns all your problems upako ni moto ambayo inachoma shida zako zote that sheds light into darkness ambayo inaleta mwangaza kwenye giza that turns situations ambayo inabadilisha hali that redeems ambayo inakomboa that blesses ambayo inabariki that changes lives ambayo inabadilisha maisha that, 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 that breaks chains ambayo inavunja minyororo that heals ambayo inaponya hallelujah hallelujah that this same fire lakini moto huu pia is the consuming fire of god ni moto ambayo una the choma una choma for example kwa mfano there was that burning fire kulikuwa na ule moto that Moses could see the burning bush ambayo kichaka Musa angeona kinachomeka that's who a servant of god is huyo ndio mtumishi wa Mungu alivyo he's burning anachomeka all the time kila wakati So that burning fire huo moto ambao unachoma also consumes. Inachoma pia. That's why you're told. Na ndipo sasa unaambiwa touch not. Usimuguze the anointed one. Mpaka mafuta wa Mungu. Because God has set that person aside. Kwa sababu Mungu amemweka huyo amemtenga huyo mtu. To take care of your business. Akashughulikie mahitaji yako. And intercede for you. Na akakuombea. So when you honor this Aiba, person. Kwa hivyo unapo umheshimu mtu huyo, you provoke God. Unamchochea Mungu. You know Peter, Petro uh, was an apostle. Alikuwa ni mtume that loved his flock. Ambaye alipenda kondoo wake and people gave unto his feet na watu wakatoa miguni pake we are told that his shadow wanasema kwamba kivuli chake would heal the sick ingeponya wagonjwa this same peter huyu petro pia had this too you know the story of ananias and safira unajua tena hadithi ya anania na safira that's what i'm talking about um the when they lied to peter walipo mdanganya petro Peter said why have you lied to the holy spirit? Petro akasema mbona mmdanganya roho mtakatifu? You've not lied to Peter. Hawakumdanganya Petro. You've lied to the consuming fire. Umedanganya moto ambayo ulambao. You know the holy spirit is a consuming fire. Roho mtakatifu ni moto na That's the kind of authority Peter had. Hayo ni mamlaka Petro alikuwa nayo. Why have you lied to the holy spirit? Kwa nini umedanganya roho mtakatifu? And they were consumed. Na wakaweza kulamba ama kuchomwa. But if you honor, lakini ukiheshimu These men and women of God. Hawatumishi wanawake wanaume wa Mungu. What happens? Nini hufanyika? Is that God is provoked. Mungu anachochelewa. 
to do something in your life kufanya kitu katika maisha yako because we've honored them kwa sababu mmeheshimu and that honor na hiyo heshima is similar to honoring god na ni sawia na kumheshimu mungu so that is another thing that provokes hicho ndicho jambo jingine ambalo uchochea Uh, another act that provokes god tendo lingine ambalo mchochea mungu is obedience ni utifu when you obey the voice of god unapotii sauti ya mungu even though it feels it is difficult hata kama ni ngumu or uncomfortable ama haikupendezi wewe and you obey him na unaweza kumtii you provoke him unamchochea he must act lazima afanye kazi i just use the example the testimony we've been given by Natum, dr were natumia ushuhuda tumepewa na daktari wewe when she gave up those beautiful clothes alipopenda hizo nguo nzuri She provoked God. Alimchochea Mungu. And he had to act. Na lazima alitenda kazi. When you obey, unapotii, however painful, hata kama ni ya kuumiza, you shall provoke God. Utamchochea Mungu. So what is it that God is calling you to obey today? Ni nini ambacho Mungu anakuitia ukatii siku ya leo? The fact that we are calling it obedience Now kwa kwa vile tunaita kwamba ni utiifu it means that it is not easy to do that act haimaanishi kwamba ni rahisi kufanya tendo hilo however the lord is saying na ni kama mungu anasema when you obey his voice unapotii sauti yake you will be blessed utabarikiwa hallelujah hallelujah i remember nakumbuka when i was still working nilipokuwa bado nafanya kazi and god is calling me to full time ministry na mungu ananiitia katika huduma and he kept speaking na aliendelea kunena and kept speaking akaendelea kunena but i was ignoring him lakini nilikuwa nampuuza one fine day siku moja uh, i was going to I had applied for uh, for a higher position nilikuwa, in the, nilikuwa, in the nilikuwa, organization nilikuwa cheo mali kazi. and as I was walking to the interview kwa mahojiano, I had the lord ask anauliza, where do you think you're going unafikiri unaenda wapi so i said i'm going for this interview nikamwambia naenda kwa mahojiano and he told me akaniambia my friend rafiki yangu we talked tulinena You're supposed to be resigning. Yafaa wewe unaacha kazi. But instead, lakini you're headed towards an interview. Unaenda kwa mahojiano for a higher job. Ili kwamba ukapate kazi ya hali ya juu. What are you thinking? Unafikiria nini? Can you obey my voice? Waweza tii sauti yangu? And I was I was like, oh my goodness, I am now cornered. Nilikuwa nimehepa Mungu. So, uh, what the long and the short? Okay. I went for the interview but I told the Lord. Nikafika kwenye mahojiano lakini nikamwambia Mungu, let me come number one in the interview. Wacha nikuwa wa kwanza kwenye mahojiano, but I won't take the job. Lakini sitachukua hiyo kazi. So that the Egyptians do not say. Si kwamba wa Misri wasi. Who is this God that she serves? Huyu ni Mungu gani ambaye anamtumikia? The, everybody knew. Kila mtu alijua that i saw that i i really loved god kwamba nilimpenda mungu so i got the first place nikakuwa wa kwanza but then the lord told me demand for a very high salary mungu akaniambia waulize mshahara wa juu sana so that they deny you the job ili kwamba wakunyime kazi so that's what i did hivyo ndivyo nilifanya and after that i said now na baadaye nikasema i'm resigning ninawaacha kazi so that i could obey god ili kwamba nikamtii mungu the minute i obeyed god wakati tu nilipomtii mungu and i was walking towards uh, towards i was taking a walk now i had already resigned nilikuwa natembea tu nilikuwa nimeacha kazi i had the lord clearly tell me nilisikia mungu akiniambia i will provide for myself nitapeana because you're worried kwa sababu una wasiwasi you don't you no longer have a salary hauna mshahara and i want to say nataka niseme that obedience kule kuti caused me ilinifanya mimi to be taken care of kushughulikiwa by god directly kwa mungu 
moja kwa moja. That obedience Kule kuti has caused me ilinifanya to handle more finances pesa nyingi than I had ever handled before. Kuliko vile nilikuwa nimeshughulikia hapo awali. That act of obedience Kule kuti tu provoked the Lord. Kulimchochea Mungu. Is there something ni, kuna, je, kuna kitu that the Lord is asking you to obey ambacho Mungu anakuuliza ukatii and you have refused to obey na umekataa kuti the Lord is saying today Mungu anasema siku ya leo is your day for obedience ni siku yako ya kutii hallelujah hallelujah obey what the Lord is saying tii kile Mungu anasema it will provoke him to do things and wonders that you've never seen kufanya vitu na maajabu ambayo hujaona I want to talk about giving. Nataka ninene kuhusu kutoa. It's been mentioned a lot here. Imenenwa sana hapa. It's an act for sure. Hili ni tendo kwa hakika that provokes God. Ambalo humchochea Mungu. I am very happy to report. Niko na furaha kuwatangazieni that this church kwamba kanisa hili are givers. Ni watu wa kutoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That uh, house of the Lord hiyo nyumba ya Mungu speaks about your giving. Inanena kuhusu kutoa kwenu. It is provoking God. Inamchochea Mungu to cause him akamfanya yeye to do ble- to bless you. Akubariki wewe. Elijah Elia went to the widow alienda kwenye mjane when there was that famine wakati kulikuwa na njaa and found you know the story na unajua hadithi and you found he found that she had only just a little oil and a little flour akapata kwamba anaunga kidogo na mafuta kidogo and then they were going to eat and then die walikuwa wale wafe and elijah na elia demanded for that little food that was left akasema apewe hicho chakula kidogo kilikuwa kimebaki don't give your son first usimpe mwana wako kwanza i know that really looks cruel hiyo ilionekana kwamba ni ya kunyanyaswa sana give me first nipe mimi kwanza and she said you know if i do that now we'll die give me anasema nikikupa tutakufa lakini anasema nipe and she did na akafanya hivyo I know that this widow najua huyu mjane had already been spoken to by the Lord alikuwa amenenewa na Mungu she had been prepared alikuwa ameandaliwa for a man of God to come kwa mtumishi wa Mungu kuja so even as she was saying oh you know there's just this little and then we die hata kama alikuwa anasema ni kidogo alafu tufe she knew alijua that she needs to give that little cake kwamba ibidi apeane ile mkate kidogo to the prophet kwa nabii she had already been instructed alikuwa amepewa uh, uh, maagizo why am i so sure kwa nini nina uhakika hivyo when i met the prophet nilipokutana na nabii and i was still working at that time nilikuwa bado nafanya kazi wakati huo the lord was already preparing me mungu alikuwa ananiandaa for ministry kwa huduma And so you know how he prepares ministers? Unajua jinsi anawaandaa wa watu wa kuhudumu. He withdraws their finances. Anachukua fedha zao. <laughs> I think the ministers here can confess to that. Watumishi hapa wanaweza sema hivyo. You must go through a crushing and a pressing of the grapes to produce wine. Lazima ufinyike ndio ukaweze kutoa ile divai. And I was already going through the potter's hands. Nilikuwa napetia katika mfinyanzi. And the fire. Na katika moto. So I was broke. Nilikuwa nime sina pesa. And I was used to having money. Nilikuwa ninamezoea kuwa na pesa. I had uh, like three different businesses. Nilikuwa na biashara tatu tofauti. And I was also working. Na nilikuwa nafanya kazi. And I used to be called in the workplace I used to be called the songko. Nilikuwa naitwa songo katika ulimwengu. I used to be called in that organization. Katika kikundi hicho. I used to be called the bank. Nilikuwa naitwa bengi. If anybody needed a loan, kama mtu alitaka mkopo, they would be told just go to her. Wangaambiwa neneni kwake. And she doesn't take interest. Hachukui riba. I just lend you when you're ready you bring it back. Nitakupa tu ukiwa tayari urudishe. And then now na haivo, suddenly i had no money pesa. all the businesses were shut down by the lord to the point where Hadi, my workmates asked what happened to you Nini how is your prayer life yako ya when koje? did the rain start beating down Mwani on you lini. now the name songko, na jina songko was dropped 
And I was fasting a lot too. Nilikuwa ninafunga saumu sana. And my lips were very dry. Na vinyo vyangu vinyo vyangu vilikuwa vimekauka. I just looked bad suddenly. Nikaangalia kwa kata tu mbaya. Something is wrong here. Kitu nikiakiendi vizuri hapa. And that's when the Lord Na ndipo Bwana sent a type of Elijah to me. Akatuma mfano wa Elia kwangu. And he said Na akasema That last cake. Huo mkate wa mwisho. Give it to me. Nipe. <laughs> The Lord had spoken to me. Mungu alikuwa amenenenea. And he had told me to give. Na alikuwa amenenenea. That nipiane. last the last money I had in my account. Ilo pe, hizo pesa za mwisho nilikuwa nazo kwenye benki. Empty my account. Nikaweza kumaliza pesa zote kwenye benki. And give it to the man of God. Na nimpe mtumishi wa Mungu. But I did not want to obey. Lakini sikutaka kutii. So I asked the man of God. Nikamuuliza mtumishi wa Mungu. What is the Lord saying about this issue? Mungu anasema nini kuhusu hali hii? Where is he going to get the provision for you? Atapata for this issue. And the man of God is more polite than Elijah. He didn't tell me give me. He would just answer It is well. But I knew. Lakini nilijua. It is me. Ni mimi who must make that giving lazima nifanye kutoa huko and finally na mwishowe i woke up one day niliamka siku moja i went to the bank nikaenda kwenye benki i withdrew everything nikachukua pesa zote and i handed it over to the man of god na nikampa mtumishi wa mungu and i know that act na ninajua tendo hilo provoked god ilimchochea mungu and has made who, me na ilimenifanya mimi who i am today jinsi nilivyo siku ya leo acts of god kuna matendo ya that mungu that god considers zealous ambaye mungu anaonekana yenye uguivu and he says from today na anasema kuanzia leo i am giving you this priesthood nakupa ukuhani huu that will last for generations ambaye itakuwa kwa kizazi hallelujah to the most high god praise the lord bwana yesu asifiwe giving Kutoa. provokes god kuchochea mungu hallelujah hallelujah give toa sacrificially toa kidhabihu abraham ibrahim was told to give his only son isaac aliambiwa atoe mtoto wake wa pekee isaka and you know we all know the story tunajua hadithi sote they had waited almost their whole lives wamekuwa walikuwa wameongojea miaka yao yote for this son of the promise ili kupata mtoto huyu wa ahadi and then now give it up na anasema tena mtoe and abraham did not hesitate ibrahim yeye haku he did not have he did not debate with god hakukuwa na mjadala na mungu he just went up the mountain akaenda mlimani and instead of losing isaac na aka Badala ya kumpoteza Isaka he was given the son Jesus Christ Alipewa mwana Yesu Kristo in the form of the lamb Kwa mfano wa Look at that exchange Angalia huko kubadilishwa You get the Messiah Unapata Mesia When you give Unapotoa you provoke God Unachochea Mungu to give you blessings kukupa baraka that don't even make sense ambazo hata hazina maana yote it is like you dig a well ni kama unachimba kisima that just keeps giving ambayo inaendelea tu kupeana the water will never dry up maji hayo yatatoeka from when i gave that when i withdrew from the account nilipotoa pesa kwenye bank and gave everything na nikapeana yote it's like i dug a well ni kama nilichimba kisima because that well has never dried sababu kisima hicho hakija kauka mali just keeps coming pesa zinakuja tu i don't work for it mimi siulizi sifanyi kazi the lord has provided mungu anapeana tu because as i gave kwa sababu nilipotoa when i entered full time ministry ndio niliingia katika huduma so I, i have never worked since then I have not worked since then. Sijawahi fanya kazi kuanzia siku hiyo. And yet, na hata hivyo, I have been provided ni, for. Nimepeaniwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the Lord saying today? Mungu anasema nini leo? You need to do an act. Waweza kufanya tendo that will provoke God. Ambaye atamchochea Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That will cause him to act. Ambaye atamfanya atende kazi your life. katika maisha yako. So that your life will never be the Ili same again. Ili kwamba maisha yako yasibaki jinsi yalivyo tena. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now we have already discussed Tulikuwa, that to do all these things that we've been talking about for the last three days, you must be a son of God. Lazima uwe mwana wa Mungu. Is there anybody here Je, kuna mtu yeyote hapa who would like to receive who would like to receive the Lord yesu. as their savior? Kama mkumbu, mkozi. Can I assume that everybody is saved? Je, nifikiri tu kila mtu ameokoka? Is there anybody who would like to give their life? To Kuna Christ? mtu angependa kupenda maisha yake kwa Kristo. If there is Please put up your hands. Kama kunaye, mkono wako. So that you join this family. Na familia hii. Where blessings kuna flow from the most high God. Kutoka kwa Mungu juu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I can assume that everybody in this room kuwa kila mtu hiki. is a son of God. Ni mwana wa Mungu. Therefore, if we are all sons of God, I want to stand in the gap. And I say that you have already provoked God. Because I have believed you have provoked him. There is a witness that you are givers. So you have already provoked him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you shall receive any blessing that you desire today in the name of Jesus for you've already provoked God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's rise up in our feet. On our feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Asante Yesu. Thank you, Jesus. Asante Yesu. For they have provoked you. Thank you, Lord. I would like to invite um, the four ladies who sang before. There's a song they, they want to sing.